Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series. This is actually the first video on this channel, so hopefully it'll turn out alright. I'm gonna be hopefully doing this in one take, so just a continuous cut. And, well, I guess we should describe the mission that's on the screen right now. This is the Aerobug 1, which is an early sounding rocket designed to hopefully cross the Kármán line. Um, or I guess the Kerman line because we're in Kerbal Space Program. And you might be asking, what's so special about this series? Well, it's in a mod pack called JNSQ, which I've never actually played before. So I don't know anything about it. I haven't researched any of the bodies. I don't know where the orbits are or what the mass of them is. I have a general idea just from the page, but I haven't read into it or anything. And I have research bodies turned on. I know nothing about the planets. Which you can see that I'm reducing the thrust here to um, like try and reduce the drag because I in simulations, which I have simulations in this save, I noticed that it was very flip happy when you were going through supersonic at max thrust and accelerating that quickly low down. So I decreased the acceleration so that it would be more stable and more consistent throughout the atmosphere and throughout the ascent. Um, Obviously, you can see it's tilting. I was trying not to do that, but the control isn't great on these early rockets, so I'm pretty much going to have to live with that from now on. So, um, you can see the uh, space center sinking way below us, and you notice that this is a different um, landscape than you would have on the original Kerbin. Um, for one, you might notice that the uh, horizon is a lot shallower. It, there's less of a curve, because this Kerbin is a lot bigger and very much just overall different. And you can also see that the city lights are uh, glitched. I'm just going to call that city, like, just uh, a graphics glitch or something. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say there. Um, but, yeah, you can see that the coastline is different. We're on a little bit of a cape, but it's a different thing. You would notice that on the original curb, and it was a bit lighter than the surrounding grass, because it was in a shore biome, I think, if I remember correctly. And the rest of it was hills. But, yeah... And I do think that we're approaching the Kármán line here. I know that instead of 70, it's 80. Yeah, we've passed the Kármán line here. And we're going to be going back down here. I've changed... I've skipped through the time of the flying up and back down because that was just mostly time warp and nothing much was happening, but I did research. And you can see that we're getting some heating bars and probably there's going to be an explosion. And here's just the command rocket core. And it's shaking a lot, so... You can see that the... Uh, it blows up right there. So that was a bit of a failure. I think I put a parachute on that. I know that I put parachutes on subsequent ones like this one, but I didn't know why it just exploded then. I thought it was an overheat, but it turns out that's not actually what it was, and I'll find out what that exactly was on this flight. And this one has a slightly different goal. That one got height. That one got up to, I think, 130, 140. So, no, it might have been higher than that, because I think this one gets up there, but... This one's goal is to get horizontal speed instead of vertical. This is the Aero B2, not the Aero B, the Aero Bug, I'm sorry. Aero B is a different rocket, that's a real life rocket. Um, but yeah, similar at start, but it tilts over a little bit more steeply right here. And you can see that again, at some point around here I reduced the thrust. This is a pretty run of the mill situation again. And I'm going to be doing this one more time this episode. They're all going to be Aerobug rockets. And this is pretty much the entirety of what's going on this time. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there you can see that it's going steeper. And I'm trying to experiment with the controls. I found that this rocket, I chose this engine. Which, because it has the roll stability. And, um, turns out that it doesn't. At least until I figure out what gives it roll stability. Which I won't until much later on. And... Um, I'm going to have a bit of a cut here coming up because my game freezes here. That's a recurring theme for these early episodes, and I'm sorry about the bad frame rate in these early clips. I think that upcoming, yeah, you can see that freeze there in the cut, but yeah, th I had some trouble with performance really early on, and you can see that I reduced the thrust to get a better curve because, again, I can't steer, but the bad frame rate is going to be fixed, and I turned on the RCS, which is what the thrust thrusters are. I'm doing a lot of things at once here. Um, but that... Um, Bad performance is fixed in the last clip here of the next mission. There, there's going to be better frame rate, and hopefully it's going to look and perform better, because I figured out what was causing that, and I was able to reduce that, but yeah. And there's the RCS. It's, I was actually able to steer with the RCS this time, which I didn't turn out to need on the subsequent era bug launches. But yeah, you can see that we're above the Kerman line, and we're going on that much longer ballistic trajectory. And we're actually going to be flying over the ocean and see the island airfield coming up, which is a, a lot farther away than it is in just regular Kerbin. 
it's on an island across the ocean completely. And you can see that I got all the uh, science from the thermometer and barometer in that probe core, um, which is in the Sounding Rockets mod for KSP that I haven't actually seen anybody use it in a Let's Play. Um, but yeah, you saw that around the corner of the screen there for a moment, I think, that I turned to it, that it's in front of the uh, pod, and there it is breaking up again. Um, and you can see that it's hot, but that's not really the problem. You can see, watch the G meter instead, you see how it's rising? And even though it's the Gs are high, it's spiked to 15 there. And you can see on that um, post-mortem there, that window of how it got destroyed, that the probe core actually destroyed but through G-forces. And this is a new Aerobee rocket, which, if you notice that the uh, previous ones had the different shaped fuel tanks on top, those didn't actually do anything, but now they're part of a second stage, which hopefully is going to be able to get this one higher and actually cross the radiation belts, which is the contract that I'm going for with Aerobee K1, which is what this is called. Um, and it's going for another altitude record. The thing is, that's not going to go to plan, which we will talk about later on in the launch, but... Yeah, this is basically the same rocket, just it's a little bit bigger with a second stage, and you can see that there's a dark spot there, which is our flag, and an adapter, which makes it more aerodynamic. So I unlocked a few parts from the science from Aero B1 and 2, and hopefully that's going to help us in the Aero B K missions, which there's only going to be this one mission at the end of this episode, this is just going to be the end of it, by the, like, end of all this. I'm sorry, that didn't really mean anything, but... You, you can figure out what I meant. And you can see there that we're actually having liquid fuel leak out of that booster and not oxidizer, which means that I'm going to have half the liquid fuel and I'm still going to be carrying all the oxidizer, which means I'm going to have less than half the performance that I would want from that upper stage. And I noticed that I was tilting here and I tried to correct it. I think you can see that there. I was trying to yaw back towards the center, but I didn't think to turn on my RCS. I don't know what I was thinking there. I'll probably think of that next time, which is going to be the Aero BK2. And um, I noticed there that the liquid fuel was empty, or it was at 0.01, so I was just completely out of liquid fuel in that one of the two tanks. So I'm really happy that I put two tanks there, otherwise it would have been a complete failure. And you can see that we're running out of fuel in that first stage, and... Well, it's going to be a minute, probably. But I'm looking at the uh, contract to see how high I have to get to hit the radiation belts. And I don't have that answer right there. And there's our stage. We've had a good light, thankfully. But yeah, the liquid fuel is only half full. And um, I looked it up, and apparently the contract is 343,000 meters. So it was 343 kilometers, I think, is the start of the radiation belt that would fulfill the contract. And it turns out that after the burn to depletion, yeah, you can see some of the pretty terrible performance there, but that's going to be fixed, hopefully. Um, there's going to be probably, like, we're going to be so close to it, and we're probably going to be a couple kilometers short, so sorry if this is a little bit of a janky commentary. It's my first time really doing this. I'm all doing it in one take, which I guess I could do better if I really wanted to, but I'm just not going to bother with that for these early episodes. I'll figure it out by the time I get to the third or fourth episode hopefully so hopefully you won't have to deal with that and here you here you can see me doing all the science hoping to get to the uh radiation belt but really not quite and i couldn't get much new science from that either because again i'd already done all the science from low above kerbin with those previous aero aero bug flights and again there's our disassembly and there's it spiking to 15 and being destroyed so yeah Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe because it really does help the channel and it really does help this video get recommended to more people. Again, sorry for the black screen. I don't really have an outro yet, but really, I really do honestly personally thank you for watching and fly safe.